Resuming debate, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Crown, Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm proud to stand here today as an Inuk woman in Canada. I'm proud to be a part of a government that has been clear that Canada is a full supporter of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. As has been stated by our ministers and by the Prime Minister, we are committed to its adoption and implementation in Canada. This means translating the standards set out in the Declaration into effective change. I want to ensure, reassure my colleague, the member for Thompson Caribou, who asked her question earlier, that ONDRIP and its components in C262 is a priority for our government, and we have full intention to honouring those priorities. In the context that we are here today to discuss Bill C-262, this bill proposes a process of dialogue and the development of an action plan that is aimed at ensuring consistency between federal law and the Declaration. Such an approach is consistent with other ongoing processes, including the review of laws, policies and operational practices, and the permanent bilateral mechanisms. It is also consistent with our government's commitment to advancing the recognition and implementation of Indigenous peoples' rights. As a result, today we are pleased to support Bill C-262. while remaining committed to further action in partnership with Indigenous people. To begin today, I would like to acknowledge the member for Abitibi Bay, James Nunavik Yu, for his tremendous work and efforts, not only in this Parliament, but in recognizing and putting forward Bill C-262 and, and a supporter of the Declaration of uh, Indigenous people in Canada. I also want to recognize and congratulate many others whom he have worked with and whom our government has worked with to advance these goals. I saw one of our former chiefs in, here today who was involved with the, with the, the Member of Parliament um, in, in making this a reality and in working together on the United Declaration, and that was former Chief Willie Littlechild. And I know there are many, many others as well. But as our government has emphasized, it is time. It is time for a renewed nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Indigenous people, one that is based on recognition of rights, on respect, on cooperation, and on partnership. We see Bill 262 as a good next step in the ongoing work of transforming the relationship with Indigenous people, and I think that's the vid vid vision my colleague held when he brought this bill forward to the House of Commons. The bill proposed in Bill C-262 would continue to build on progress that has already been made by our government to date. We have already established 50 recognition of Indigenous rights and self-determination discussion tables across the country. We have created a permanent bilateral mechanism with national Indigenous organization. And further, we have established a working group of ministers to review federal laws, policies and operational practices to ensure they align with Section 35 of our Constitution as well as the UN Declaration. That process is being led by our Minister of Justice, a First Nations woman in Canada. Mr. Speaker, we are also, as a government, released 10 principles respecting the Government of Canada's relationship with Indigenous people. The principles reflect our views expressed by Indigenous people over generations, and it reinforces through the Royal Commission on Aboriginal People, a document dating back 
more than 20 years without really being enacted in Canada. So the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action and ONDRIP combined with all of these others is, is certainly the groundwork that we've needed to really advance our relationship with Indigenous people in this country. These and other efforts are part of a government's approach in advancing reconciliation and improving the lives of Indigenous people in Canada. We really appreciate all of the people that have been involved, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in this country, in speaking up for the United Na Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. We heard today a passionate plea from my colleague opposite, a plea that was built on life experiences and came from the heart. That, Mr. Speaker, is what we have heard expressed by so many Indigenous people across our country. We know that that view is far-reaching, and we also know what must be done to operationalize the United Nations Declaration provisions in Canadian law. This includes pursuing comprehensive legislation and policy changes in partnership with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis Nations in order to fully adopt and implement the Declaration and meet the promise of Section 35 of our Constitution. A transformative shift in relations is required, and that's what we're doing. Relationships must be based on the recognition of rights and a shift which enables tangible change to the marginalization and disempowerment that have been experienced by Indigenous people and communities for far too long. This shift cannot be achieved through just one piece of legislation alone. And for this reason, our government is working with Indigenous people to bring forward further legislation and policy shifts that will be based on the recognition and implementation of rights. This may include new legislative standards for Crown conduct based on recognition, mechanisms to support Indigenous self-determination and the inherent right of self-government, and changes to core policies regarding Indigenous people. I'm sure that many of my colleagues in the House are, as I am today, happy to hear that government is prepared to walk that line and to bring forward the legislation that will be necessary to implement this declaration. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I think that we can all agree that while the principles speak of shift to recognition, they cannot be operationalized themselves. And the same is true for the UN Declaration. Words are not enough, action is needed. Therefore, we need to build a framework in full partnership with Indigenous people that embeds recognition in all federal decisions, actions, and negotiations that aligns federal laws with the UN Declaration and that creates the mechanisms that have been supported by Indigenous governments for a very long time. That includes transitioning out of the Indian Act. Mm -hmm. So we're... <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in closing, I just want to congratulate the member for bringing forward this motion today to say that us on this side of the House are proud to support this private member's bill and give him our guarantee that we are on this path together, all Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians, and we will do what is long past due in this country, and that is bring forward the right legislation and standards to ensure that self-determination and inherent rights of Indigenous people are respected in the lands that we all love. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for